Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today my plan is to show you how I start my own hydro mineral hydroponic uh, cultivations from start to finish uh, as fast as possible basically. And this is where I start my, um, my little seeds and seedlings or clones. Uh, you, I can sometimes I've used soil sometimes uh, now I'm trying only hydroponic stuff. As you can see here, there's some plugs with some strawberries. Still not sure how I'm going to transplant these specifically. These are all lettuce. I started them initially in just a Tupperware with wet towel. Once they germinated, I moved them here. And now they're just like floating in these little things. So then now they're basically ready to move out, which is what we're going to do. And over there you have a mixture of tomato and basil that I cloned from previous plants. Uh, you will be able to see not all of them have roots. You can see there's one there that has roots. But I'm going to basically show you how to move some of these to my systems. Uh, and how where can you actually grow these? I'm going to show you right now. So I've actually, these are the grow boxes I usually uh, use because I have a lot of them left over. Uh, but you can basically use any container. Uh, yeah, that I would say should hold a few liters worth. Uh, and then you have a lid and you can drill a hole and you can either have a, a net pot like that where you put some, some specific plugs on like the, the strawberry ones you saw or these ones that you can get as well. You can also just, these ones come with seeds but you can get them without the seeds. You can use rock wool, you can use a lot of different things. In my case I also use cork here just to hold the plant in the pot or even the top of a can, of a soda can that I, or a beer can that I just cut from. Uh, but you don't have to grow on these, you can grow as well on just a normal glass bottle. Here I have some Portuguese uh, empty uh, wine bottle. So we're going to try both so you can see basically how it's done. So you have your seedlings, everything's ready. The next step is going to be to fill this up with water and add the nutrients and then basically, yeah, mix it all up and add the seedlings and you're ready to go. As far as nutrients go, Personally, because I'm a bit lazy as well, but I would recommend this if you're starting, you should start with a one part nutrient solution. That means all the nutrients are already in the bottle and you just have to add them to your growing container and then mix them up. This is another example here. I'm going to use this one because this is an older one I have. I'm not sure it's going to work very well, but it's good enough so you can see what it, uh, how it looks like. You can also use three part solutions like these ones here. Um, personally, these are more if you want to specifically promote certain stages of your plant, you can buy these as two parts or three parts. If you're just starting out, I would really not advise you to start with these. I mean, it's still simple, but uh, it's much, just, much more convenient to just stick to a one part solution. So as you can see, I'm literally just filling it up with water. Uh, usually some containers that are specifically made for hydroponics have a marking where you, where you should grow, where you fill up to. The objective is just the tip of the roots of the seedlings are just touching the surface of the water. So it's not completely submerged. That's the trick basically. That and then you should then close the lid and keep a moist air space around basically. Before you add your nutrients, uh, you should check the bottles. Usually the commercial systems, they indicate how much, uh, let's see, how much you should add to the container where you're growing for, from. Uh, or you get these um, little meters. I have, a, this is the EC meter that measures the salts or mineral salts in the nutrient solution. And this is the pH meter. I don't really use the pH so much anymore. Usually I find that just Taking a look at the EC is okay, but if you really want to make sure you don't have problems, you should optimize for both. With the EC meter, I can rely on, for example, old solutions or things that I don't really know what's in there anymore. I just add them and then I check and add more water or more nutrient solution depending on what I read here. So depending on the crop we're targeting, for this one I will be adding basil and lettuce. We should target probably around 1.2 to 1.6 millisiemens 
uh, that will be read here. So if you check right now, just the tap water itself, you can see that it has a milli siemens of 0 0.16, which is not enough just to grow the plants. So I'm gonna add the nutrients now and mix them all up, and then it should be ready for our plants. Shaking, it's always very important to do. I have a little measuring cup here. I basically just did another one before, so I kind of already know more or less what I should target, which is around, so first I can add maybe 12 milliliters, and then let's, uh, let's add some, yeah, some six more. Rinse a bit with water, and important to mix very well as well. So yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. Because I have this meter, I can afford to be a bit imprecise. Then I can just add it in and check the reading. You can see it's 1.04. Could use a little bit more. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to add just a little bit more, maybe some three or four milliliters more. Spread it around. Mix it. If you're also taking a look at the pH, you should also account for a pH between 5.5 and 6.5, depending on the crop. You should uh, That's the range for most hydroponic measures. So you can see it's about 1.2, 1.3, and it's probably good enough, I should say. You rinse your little meter after you're done using it. And now it's time to add the seedlings. So as you can see, I've very carefully uh, taken out some seedlings. Uh, ideally, I would get them with the roots that are long enough and numerous enough for the clones and for the, the seedlings that I started from scratch, uh, that I have long enough roots that I don't have to submerge the whole plant completely because that contributes to root rot. In my case, I like to use the cork pieces, like I said, because it's a reusable material that's good enough just to hold the plant in place. So basically, I carefully sandwich the the plant here with some light so that the roots are barely visible and then I just insert it here. It's okay if it moves a bit. Uh, and then you do the same with the other ones. So you see here, in this case the roots got a bit overdeveloped, but that's fine. As long as some roots are over the air, that's the important part. So it just goes in here nicely. So the basil so far, this one is quite long here as you can see, so I'm going to try to to lift it a little bit up, but it's still okay, usually. And then for the other ones, here I can take the lettuce. These are much more sensitive and, and fragile than the clones. Also because I had them with a little bit too much uh, lack of light. So they got elongated, but that's also fine. This is quite forgiving uh, overall, and if it doesn't work out, I have so much more uh, seedlings to draw from. So yeah, that's okay as well. Even if they dry out, uh, it's I can rearrange it, or I can just get a new one. So that's fine. And now for the last one. So, and it, that's it. Basically, this is a set and forget system. So now I'm just gonna move it onto my shelf with light and they should grow fine without any more addition. Maybe in four weeks or five weeks, I might need to top up the water a little bit with tap water, but I don't check the nutrients anymore. It's basically set and forget. So this is where they are going to be. The tricky part in my case is that uh, I have to carry this full of water so if you're doing this somewhere else you might want to prepare it on site. I just do it out of the kitchen out of habit. So this is the shelf. The light is not connected so I just have to connect the light. And that's it. Ready to go. 
And to grow in the bottle, it's basically the same, except it's slightly more unforgiving because first of all, you have a very narrow stretch where you where the roots will be. And it might be that it dries out too fast, so the plant has to be adequately placed as well. And But otherwise, it's the same. If you already know with your nutrient solution uh, what it recommends, you can calculate what it is, for example, for almost a liter. Uh, in my case, I don't know what this is exactly. I don't know how much I should add. So first I'm going to add some cold water or lukewarm water at least. Almost up to the top. For tomatoes, we need to reach about two and a half uh, millisiemens. So I'm just going to add a few and then I'm going to shake it very well and pour it into a cup where I can measure easily the EC. See, I'm gonna have, I don't know, five, four. You can also use a funnel as well. So easy. Shake it. You can also just put a cork. Then I'm gonna pour it here. And let's check what the EC says. So yeah, almost spot on, 2.5. Perfect, all right. So now let's see, the level is here. The seedling I'm going to add is this little tomato one. I should wait for it to develop more roots, but just for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm gonna put it as it is. You can use the funnel here. And then the part that's a bit more unforgiving is you have to check basically where the water level is and how, once you place your root, how it's going to be in there basically. So at this depth, it could already be enough that I add it like that. Uh, sometimes I cut these little pieces of, uh, yeah, styrofoam that I get from packages just to secure it better. In this case, I think it could be enough just to add a little something here, just so it doesn't move so much. It's not going to be moving a lot, but in case I need to, to move things around. Um, if you notice here, sometimes it's easy to check, sometimes not. But if here you can see that the, the water level is above this label and I can see the root is already submerged, so it should be enough as it is. And then you just put it next to natural light or artificial light, like I also do, and you're good to go. The system should, with, it, with the tomato, it should consume a bit more, so you might need to replenish with either just tap water or nutrient water. Again, if you're gonna do a lot of these, I can recommend getting some brand of uh, EC meter, but if you're just gonna try the first time, just follow the instructions of the nutrient bottles that you get, and you should be good to go. Thank you for watching, and uh, see you in the next video.